On June 6, 1976, The Omen was released. 30 years later, 20th Century Fox timed it up perfectly. It was so poetic, right in the middle of that horror remake boom. On June 6, 2006, 06, 06, 06, they came out with the remake of The Omen. And it fell on a Tuesday night, so I went to go and see it, right? But they were only showing it in one theater, and they were closing early because it was a Tuesday night, and it was sold out. The last showing that they did was like at 9 o'clock or something. So I had to see The Da Vinci Code. Another great movie, but I was pissed off because that was once in a lifetime thing. I blew off going to the party at Hell, Michigan. That was like a once in a lifetime, once a century party also. Anyway, back to the movie. If you're not familiar with it, the simple concept is the birth of the Antichrist coming in the form of a little boy. Now that doesn't sound that appealing, but if you see, if you've seen the original, it's the way it was filmed. You, if you're a horror fan, you could appreciate the beauty and the cinema and the bold and spectacular soundtrack that comes along with it and the great cinematography. And that's a franchise, that's a movie that has so many iconic shots. Most horror movies only have like one or two iconic like symbols and shots scenes in the movie this one has a number of them between the hanging suicide and the decapitation and the dog oh man this is just classic anyway um the soundtrack for this movie wasn't as amazing as the 76 version but the cast was i, I thought they got together a really good cast Steve schreiber he's got Really good screen presence, really good actor coming off the Manchurian Candidate. And he was in this, he did a really great job in this. I love his performance. And Julia Stiles, she was about 25 when they filmed this. She had a nice run, her career has really slowed down. But she's a good replacement for Leah Remick. And also, Gregory Peck was in the original The Leading Man. He, and Leo Schreiber is a good replacement for him. And the, for the photographer, this was almost like a reimagining. Like, they almost shot it scene for scene, almost. And similar dialogue, similar, similar script guidelines as the original. Kind of like how they did that with the Psycho 98 remake. But they modernized it and kind of set it more in 2006 in this. But it still felt the same. It was... It was a perfect symmetry of 70s and 2000s horror. Two of my favorite decades. First is the 80s, then the 2000s, then the 70s. 50s and 60s was a good run with Hammer and all those Vincent Price movies and Christopher Lee movies. But anyway, um, so they hired that one guy. Um, David Warner was the photographer in the original. And they also hired Mia Farrow, which is a nice touch, considering she gave birth in Rosemary's baby to that form of the son of the devil. So that was great casting. Anyway, the story of the Antichrist, he was the son of the devil. He lays out the certain plan, the plan that's been written in the stars, way beyond our comprehension of time. Obviously, we know the story of God and the fallen angels, a third of God's angels, according to the Bible, created a mutiny and went against him. And there was a big fight up in the heavens. And he threw God and all his fallen angels down to earth to prey upon our souls. He hasn't come in human form yet, or maybe he has. In this script, he has come in human form just how Jesus came in human form for God and he chose the British ambassador to, as a one up to for his family to get in to get in close to the president 
Anyway, uh, it doesn't even matter. There's so much evil in persons, there's, and, and he uses people. All the people come to aid him because he'll possess them and whatnot. There's so many devils, minions, and evil people out there. It's not even funny, but really, we're all just pawns. And in the, in the, it doesn't matter if you're good or evil, really, in the in the grand scheme of things. It, it it's it all, it's all about when the beast comes back, Judgment Day, the Apocalypse, Armageddon. That's gonna be the Super Bowl of all matchups: God versus the devil on Earth. We're all just pawns on the chessboard. Let it all play out. Let us slowly destruct the earth. Let mankind slowly destruct the earth through politics, pollution, and whatnot. And then the real fight's going to come between the devil and God. But we already know who's going to win. Christ, which is why most people are Christians, because they want to save their soul. But if you trust in the, but if you go for the devil, you get supernatural powers unbeknownst to man on earth. But you're sacrificing eternity in hell. Wow. I'm not getting, I'm not trying to get any more deep. This is way over everyone's comprehension, even mine, because we're not meant to know. We're just meant to live our useless existence of life, but you're just supposed to accept that, really. Anyway, um, from the eternal sea he rises, creating armies on either side, turning man against his brother till man exists no more. That poem can sum up time and earth any more perfectly. Great cinematography, the nice architectural shots in this. Um, the priest death, definitely Damien's best death scene. He kills him Final Destination style through the will of our destiny of evil. And um, the priest where like the lightning strikes the rod and it comes down and goes right through is all oh, just classic. And then they have to meet the deformed cloak priest who led him to the cemetery. They helped give birth to the Antichrist. I don't know if they were Satanist priests or part of the church or how it worked exactly. And then they said something like his mother was a jackal. Then they dig up the grave and it's like a little jackal dog. I don't know, it's fucked up. There's a lot of ambiguous things, just like how the Bible is ambiguous. You don't know. It's your interpretation, you know. And, um... They do the deformed cloak priest, like I was saying, and they go to the cemetery. Oh, just so many dark, amazing shots in this. Instead of going overboard on special effects, they let the story play out, let the actors do what they do, and it did the just did the architectural shots of Europe and Italy and London. It was great, and and the girl's suicide death, great le replica done of it. The flower pot. That scene's iconic. Then there's the flower pot fall scene, where Leah Remick, Julia Stiles falls, where he tries to kill the mom. He starts off small. He killed their baby so he could be raised by him. Then he's going to kill the mom. And then he's going to gain everything that Thorne has and work his way up into the presence. You see, I haven't seen the sequels, Omen 2, Omen 3. Definitely plan on seeing those, but it goes step by step, as in, as in Jesus did in real life. And anyway, he tries to. Anyway, then the head chopped off, just as good as the original. The original's great, but this one's a little bit more gorier. The original didn't even have gore in it; they just showed the head prop, propping off. Anyway, so many iconic scenes for one movie. Like I was saying, rating nine out of ten for sure. He possesses those who interfere, come in contact from his ultimate plan. And of course the Thorn character ends up getting killed at the last scene when he tries to sacrifice him and kill him at the end on the God's altar. Just classic. June 6, 2006, six years later, 2012, JBM. Those are my final thoughts. Love this horror remake.